dynamiccarstore.com to get the cars. Right. Icons, legends aiming at the stars. First day at checkout to save your point 10. Now your bank account won't be staying M10. empty. Dynamiccarstore.com. Right. Use code Hursty. Go on. Hey there guys, welcome back to Hersey Games and welcome back to the QPR career mode. If you are not all nice and caught up with this series, then go check out the playlist, get yourself all nice and caught up and then come back. But if you are, then welcome to today's episode. Today, as per usual, two games to play. We are away to Huddersfield in the league and then we actually have Watford in the cup. I'm actually going to play the Watford game. I know I have been simming the cup games, but I'm going to play the Watford game because it's a pretty tough team and a cup run would be quite nice. Uh, and especially on the back of what was a pretty stinky result for those who uh, do remember from last episode, obviously losing 4-3 to Brentford right at the death. Would be nice to try and salvage that and get back into uh, playing well and, and some points in the league against Huddersfield and then a good cup win against Watford getting them out of form would be quite nice to see as well, obviously as they're one of the teams that are around us in the table. But before we start off, one thing I'm a little bit unsure of still is is this centre-back situation. Now, we've had a few people suggest a few things, and uh, I think a very good point that was made was to try and not sign somebody that is particularly uh, frequently seen in a lot of career modes. So, for example, I've seen a fair few career modes where you see players like Garcia get picked up and, and, you know, things like that. So having it be a little bit more unique, I think would be quite nice to see. And my, my difficulty is that I think apart from Courtney House, I don't think anyone here is going to be massively affordable for us. Obviously, Ajayi on many, many wages. Courtney House on nowhere near as many wages. We can try and have those wages down a little bit as well if we can try and convince him to sign for a slightly smaller fee. But the slight issue we're going to have is, is fitting those wages just in general with our club because our most paid player or like our highest paid player is on 18 grand a week and that is Adoma. Apart from him, it's eight grand a week for Bright. So realistically, Adoma is already on way too many wages compared to what we should realistically have him on. But uh, I can't really afford to go and buy someone on like over £20,000 a week. Like we saw in the career mode last year, we had issues with wages. So I've got to be careful. I've got to be sensible. And realistically, it's going to be a tough one to sort. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the centre-backs that we've got. I'm going to just stick with the fact that we we have Masterson and we have Dickey at the moment. Uh, we have, obviously, Carter Vickers coming in next season and we will have, um, obviously, Barbe back for next season as well. But apart from that, I think that's kind of what we've got to stick with uh, is, is just waiting for these players uh, to either come in or, or obviously be fit enough to play again. And I think that's what we're going to have to do because realistically, I don't think we're going to gain anything from having an extra centre-back right now and then next season having five centre-backs on the book that like are, are people that could potentially be starting like Masterson currently playing a 70 uh a 70 rating and, and isn't playing badly at all so I, I'm gonna feel bad when I obviously have to drop him out but realistically when Barbe is back Barbe will be coming back into the team if he's fit before the end of the season which I don't think he is going to be or of course we have Carter Vickers coming straight in and Carter Vickers is already going to be at like a 70 rating as well so it's going to be a tricky one to have to work out and and sort of decide on who to play and who to drop but realistically all we can do is uh sort of go with our gut and my gut on this one is telling me to uh to stick with what we've got and and invest in our youth system by getting a new youth coach so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait to the end of the month unless someone jumps to mind as a center back or a player to bring in i'm waiting to the end of the month and then we're going to bring in um a new youth scout and send them away on the first of february so without further ado i'm going to work my way forward to the huddersfield game uh and i'll see you guys there one thing I also want to talk about while I get ready to sort of set up this team and everything is uh, we were told that apparently I've been saying Pepe asked his name wrong. Now, I know I've, I've now been told that and I know that I'm now saying his name incorrectly. However, he's always going to be Pepe Ars in my eyes. That's always going to be his name. So I'm afraid I'm going to stick with it. I, I know I've now been corrected, but... It, it's Pepe Ars. I have to say Pepe Ars. It's as simple as that. So apologies. I do sincerely not mean to offend anyone if I'm saying, say, for example, your name wrong or it's a, a name from where you are from and, and uh, I'm saying it wrong. There's no offense meant, but it's Pepe Ars, boys. I've got to stick with it. But let's get into this game against Huddersfield. You can see we're rocking the 4-4-2. Bon has come in for Kelman, as you saw. Otherwise, I mean, this is pretty much our strongest lineup right now, I have to say. So uh, let's jump into it and uh, let's see... If we can pick up three points against what I'm pretty sure is bottom of the table in Huddersfield. Every game 
every game we're told about Lyndon Dykes and the fact he is the top goal scorer in the league because he is eight goals clear of second place, which is king. This is mad. I have to say he's absolutely smashing it. But hopefully we can come away with three points here against bottom of the table. Again, every single game, as we've seen, can we can lose games that we don't expect to. We can win games that we expect to win. It, it's as simple as that. It's a tricky one. But the main thing we have got to focus on is three points today. Let's forget about anything else. Let's forget about form or whatever. It's three points. Let's focus on us and let's get a win, boys. It's been a pretty uh, slow start, but we see Huddersfield starting to make their way up the pitch here just a little bit slowly but surely. They do work it into the box here. Dickie's got to be smart. Dickie has done pretty well there and uh, stepped in to get the possession, but it has gone straight back to them on the edge of the box. This has kind of been what we've seen the entire half so far, minus that awful pass there. But they've just been so patient with possession, just knocking it around for fun. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit worrying there because obviously we were really struggling to get the ball off of them and do anything. Lovely bit of play here. We get it to Cameron. He's going to play it out wide to bright side Samuel. We see the run into the box from McCauley Bomb. We're going to have to take our time because the pass wasn't quite there. We go to Lyndon Dykes. That's a good block from the defender there. And uh, that was our first chance of the game. That's much better. We're slowly getting into it now. Get the ball in the middle of the pitch. We're going to play it down to McCauley Bond. Bond seems to run from Dykes. Dykes, surely this is Dykes' territory. It is. Lovely stuff. We go 1-0 up straight away. And again, like I said, we were slow starting. They made some good chances for themselves. Played a lot of possession. But the main man gets a goal. He's going to be on 30 goals potentially before the end of blooming January, boys. That's crazy to think about. This guy's absolutely been everything for us this season. He has been nothing short of phenomenal. And that is 1-0, 18 minutes in. You'll love to see it, boys. We've got the ball out wide here. Todd has come all the way back here to try and keep Diakabe out. But uh, he's done pretty well to force the ball backwards. But now Hammerlinen steps in. That's really good work there from Hammerlinen. Him and Todd, honestly, do work so, so well down this left-hand side. And you can see here Hammerlinen has got time to just keep running ahead. He's going to play inside to Todd. Maybe it wasn't the best time to play that in my head there. If I could get that to Todd, then we had a chance to maybe just keep pushing ahead and keep pushing forward and have three men out there in the middle. But... Man, we're countering pretty well, but we do have to be careful that, obviously, we're giving them loads of chances to attack. We can't let them get one in on goal. They've played the ball around quite nicely here. Ozzy Kakai does well to step up to it. Plays a nice little sneaky pass as well out there. And Amos is going to play it to Cameron. Cameron is going to play it all the way to Bright here. And Bright is now in behind. You can see they're playing a really high line. Bright side. Samuel finds the back of the net. Makes it 2-0. And that is a well-deserved second goal as well. Because we've been so rigid and so regimented at the back. We've defended really, really well. And really cleverly as well. But the counter-attacks are exactly what we're doing right now. And that's exactly what we need. You can see a fantastic pass from Cameron. Good work from Kakai to win the ball. And then good play from our two midfielders to get that ball up there to Bright Sire Samuel to score his first goal of the game. 36 minutes in, six goals in the league for Bright, and we're living good right now, boys. Love to see it. They've got a chance here. Ball on the edge of the box. It's kind of bounced around a little bit. And we've had a good couple of chances to get this ball clear. But it's just sort of ricocheted off of people instead of us really getting much of a chance to get rid of it. But Hammerlinen yet again out wide here. And doing pretty well to keep the ball out. But they have passed it into the middle here. Now Masterson's turn to step up. Again, look, they're just kind of being slow and patient with this. Like I said earlier on in the game, they're being so patient with the ball. And they are just passing it around, waiting to try and find the space. They found a little bit of space there. But yet again been pushed out wide and yet again Hammerlinen is there to try and stop this cross and he has done so very very well look at this just good defense here from Hammerlinen good solid work and he wins the throw but it is going to be half time good stuff for there at the end of the half and again we're just defending very solidly this is something that normally I'm not particularly good at which is just holding people out keeping them out of the box stopping chances from coming into the box but we've done really well Hammerlinen and Kakai have had fantastic games so far today stopping a lot of crosses and breaking a lot of chances down right at the start of it but second half I think we're going to just kind of look for more of the same um, I'm going to bring on Ilias chair because I'd like to get Ilias a bit more game time because obviously he's been someone who's kind of missing out at the moment because Ellis Todd is stepping up to the plate and obviously somebody we're looking to play more and more for the future because he is a big big part of this club going forward so uh, what we'll do is obviously just make that one change at some point I'll probably look to bring on Kelman again I'd like to get Pepe Ars maybe on the pitch a little bit more but it'll probably end up being Albert Adoma or Todd Kane coming on but uh, more of the same in the second half because that was a very very good 45 minutes from us Oh, we've lost the ball on the edge of our box here. Not a particularly good place to lose possession. Yet again, got to try and stop this cross coming in. But this is where you see the ball has worked its way into the box. It's a bit of a stress. That's a good little block there. I'm not entirely sure who made that block. I think it might have been Conor Masterson. He's done really, really well there. And then uh, it was a bit of a worrying one. But the players have done well to get this ball out of the box now. And Cameron, yet again, is going to try and set away brighter side Samuel. He's done so very, very well. We see Elias Chair running into the back post here. We're going to play that over the top. Oh, nowhere near enough on it. Bit of a wasted chance. But again, another good counter-attack. That is what we are relying on right now to try and get this ball forward and make our chances. It's definitely the counter-attack. 
Ilias Chair now bursting forward here. Ilias Chair going to try and dink it past. Gets a little bit lucky. Gets a bit of a rebound here. We're going to go to that back post because look who's coming at the back post. It's Albert Adoma on the volley. He's hit it wide. Albert Adoma just doesn't seem to do it for me, boys. There's so many times where we get great chances. We've seen Kelman bag those. We've seen Bond, Dykes, Bright, Ilias Chair himself as well. But Albert Adoma just doesn't seem to hit those cross shots in particularly well. He seems to always just spoon them wide. Oh, man, it's a real shame. Three would have absolutely had the game to bed with 10 minutes left. Yet again, they work the ball out wide here. And again, I'm, I don't mind it. I'm fine with that because their sort of plays from out wide aren't really creating too much. I say that and they create a really good chance. What a save from Joe Lumley. That is without a doubt their best chance of the game. But Lumley does really, really well. Of course, it happens when I'm sat there saying that their attacks have been pretty poor and they make their best attack of the game so far. But uh, I have to say that is a very, very good save from Lumley, who's been really good in this uh, career mode for us, I have to say. He's playing like a gold-rated card, so fair play to him. Can we maybe get one last counter-attack there? I wanted that to Bright Sire Samuel. He's tried to play it across to McCauley Bond, which was never going to work out for us, was it? But they have played it backwards, and they're still going. Okay, it's not quite full-time yet, according to the ref. It is now, though. There we go. There we have it. 2-0, a fantastic result for us, I have to say. We played a lot of the time on the counter, playing a lot in the defence and then working that ball forward. And I have to say, I think we did so pretty well. Really proud of the team. I think they played really, really good. Again, Kakai and uh, Hammerline and both with fantastic games for me. I think they really, really were the best players on the pitch. Bright made a couple of great runs from the defence as well. We had 27 percent possession if that does not show you how little i had of the ball and how much i was counter-attacking then i don't know what does that that just goes to show they literally got the ball kept it and tried to play it around the wings and we just blocked them for 90 minutes well done boys good result just want to show you how that game and how that result impacted our table standings. And uh, it didn't really change very much. Watford and Millwall both picked up wins, as did Stoke. Birmingham lost their game because they played against Watford. Uh, but again, that puts us in a really good spot. Obviously, four points off of third place, uh, which is a very good place to be in. Uh, but only one point out of the top six. Like, realistically, if games go our way, we can literally be in fourth place and one, play, one point behind third, which is a fantastic place for us to sit in. But first of all, we do have our cup game against Watford. Let's see if we can maybe get them a little bit out of form. Uh, obviously, they themselves are in form right now, but let's see if we can uh, maybe rock the boat a little bit. Okay, so you can see a few changes here for our game up against Watford. We have got a four- two three one wide that we're going to implement ball and amos sitting in the cdm spots chair and um we've got george thomas playing on the right mid obviously a little bit out of form and stuff purely because he's not playing very much football for us because he really struggles to get into this team i have to say pepe is playing at cam behind kelman a lone striker in kelman today dykes is going to sit on the bench get a bit of a rest we've also brought in kane i'm going to very quickly sort out the uh, custom tactics and then we'll jump into this game Okay, away to Watford is always going to be a tricky game. It doesn't matter which team you are in the championship. You're always going to find uh, Watford a tough, tough team to play against. Obviously, this is in the cup, so it's equally difficult. It doesn't matter. And uh, it's just going to be a tricky game, I think. Obviously, a little bit of a rotated squad. A few players coming in that wouldn't normally start for us. But I think that's going to be a good chance for a few players to maybe set the mould and try and get into it. I don't think I, I don't know if I remembered, but Morgan's on the bench. The youngster um, right mid player who's, who's come in and is uh, sitting on the bench for us. Maybe get a few minutes under his belt. That'd be nice to see. But uh, let's go for it. Obviously, a win in the cup would be nice. Thomas plays the ball in the middle here. We've got Pepe Ars on the ball now. Kelman and Thomas both making decent runs. We find George Thomas here. George Thomas going to work it into the box. Play it onto his left foot. Going to try to strike himself. Oh, he's hit it just wide. Obviously, I think he is a right-footed player. So it was always going to be a bit of a risk moving it onto his left foot. But I backed him and it has just gone wide. But a really good bright start for us there. I have to say, playing pretty well off the bat. And I didn't expect to be quite this, uh, quite this attacking straight away. Kelman, going to play it into Pepe now. Pepe, oh, plays it round the defender. Lovely stuff from Pepe Ars. Can he do it? Pepe Ars. Oh, he's hit it just wide as well. What a start to the game that would have been. We could have been 2 0 up at this point. But Pepe Ars has hit the ball wide. Somebody also said I need to change his boots. I forgot to do that and I do apologise. I will change his boots at some point because those boots are disgusting. But, uh, mate, that would have been such a good start if either of those had gone in. T 1 or 2 0. What a start it would have been, boys. And he has chair with the ball here. Going to try and play it to Kelman. He's not really put much on there. That was meant to be a through ball, but he's ended up having to come backwards to pick it up. And it's a little bit of a lucky rebound there. But Kelman is going to get onto this with his pace here. Can he get it past the defender? Oh, I tried the double O one. Wasn't the best move there. But again, you can see, even though they've got five at the back, we are finding holes in this defense. And we are managing to work our way through it pretty darn well. We're going to play it in the middle now. Kelman, can he get this ball forward? He can. Oh, he just misses it. Good effort, but... 
Oh, man, we're playing well. We've just got to make this dominance count. We've got to get a goal while we are on top for sure. Because otherwise, we're going to end up uh, sort of ruining, wasting these chances early on. And maybe this could be another one. Pepe Ars finds the back of the net. There we go. There's the goal we deserve. If you haven't been watching the game, then you wouldn't know what we should be 1-0 up. But we definitely, definitely have played well. We've got plenty of chances, which you'll see from the highlights we've shown so far. And you have to say, that is a very, very well-worked goal. And Pepe Ars, mate, I'm glad to see it. I know I'm butchering your name. I've been told that now. But you're still Pepe Ars in my eyes, bro. You will always be Ars. Mm, that sounded better in my head. <laughs> oh, they've played it into the middle here. Okay, that was their first real chance. But uh, Lumley's done really, really well with a very simple shot. Just to keep it nice and calm. But as you can see, that being their first chance, it shows how dominant we've been. And again, just like in the uh, game against Huddersfield, on a really good counter. We're going to play that low-driven cross in. Oh, it's just a little bit too much on it. Kelman would have uh, absolutely lapped that goal up there. But it was just a little bit ahead of him. Going to get the ball to Ilias Che here. Oh, I think Pepe's just run offside. He has. It's a real shame because, yet again, we've looked really good on the counter-attack. I have to say, Ilias Che is picking up the ball in plenty of occasions and just literally just driving that ball forward, whether it be playing a pass to uh, Kelman, doing a little switch across to Thomas, or playing it through to Pepe Ars, which we've seen on a number of occasions. But it, it just goes to show that we have got the ability to counter even without our main players up front or in the attack because we have got no brighter size semi. That was a good little chance at the end, but it is half time. No bright, no dykes. You know, we're not playing with half of our, you know, main attacking players. And we're still creating plenty of chances against a very good five at the back in Watford. One of the best sort of, sort of squads in the championship. And we are matching them to a man at the moment, if anything, outplaying them, I have to say. Uh, I think we're just going to stick with it at the moment. I think a lot of the players in this sort of, at least the attacking third of the pitch or attacking half of the pitch, really looking at those four players up there, none of those are really starters for us. So if I can keep all of those guys on the pitch for the full 90, I'll be very happy with that. I'd like to bring on Gubbins at some point, probably for Masterson because he definitely gets the tighter of the two. But obviously, we know Gubbins is not the best centre-back for us. But it'd be good to get him a little bit more sharpness. Uh, and again, just so he's more prepared if we end up needing him going uh, forward down the line, having him come in would be fantastic for us. But yet again, more of the same here, boys. Let's see if we can uh, play another very, very solid and very impressive uh, second half, just like we did in the first. Let's see how we do, boys. George Thomas is going to try and burst forward here. He's doing really well to hold off the defender there. But Thomas is going to have to turn. Plays it inside to Pepe Ars. We see Kelman with a bit of a chance to break here. Kelman, can he get a chance away? He does make a good strike, but it's a very good save from Foster. A good effort, though. Again, another good example of countering and countering pretty darn quickly. But that is a good save from Foster because I think that was just sneaking in. But I've made a couple of changes here, and we have made two very, very interesting changes. Just like that board, which doesn't actually tell us anything, mate. But we've taken off Pepe Ars, and we have also taken off Conor Masterson. We've moved George Thomas to Cam, and we have brought on the young Morgan, 58 rated at right mid. And we have also brought on Gubbins at centre-back. So you have to think we have definitely downgraded the squad a little bit here for the sake of a, a little bit of fitness, obviously, on Masterson. But also, it's good to try and get these youngsters a bit of game time. And this could be a good start here for Morgan. He scuffed the shot. Oh, they work the ball forward really well. But that is Rob Dickey coming across and saving the day a little bit there. I have to say, I was a little bit like mind blocked. I forget that I have to commentate for both ends of chances. I was a little bit stressed, but we've done very, very well to keep that one out. And now they do have a corner here to try and cause another problem. Tom Cleverly standing over it. They've also brought on Jao Pedro. Good block there from Morgan, the youngster. Can we keep this ball out now? Don Ball's going to push, push it out and, and try and keep the ball out of the box. He's done really well to push Cleverly back out wide and keep him out there, hopefully. Don Ball, good stuff there, mate. Well done. Morgan is in behind the defence here. Go on, Morgan, mate. Make that run into the middle. This is your moment, pal. Morgan going to take the strike. <laughs> I have no idea if he's left or right footed, but I hope for his sake that is his weak foot. Otherwise, that is a problem. Only a couple of minutes of added time left to play. We have to just keep them out of our box. If we can make them work the ball backwards, then the whistle will go. But they have worked it forwards here. Got to keep the man quiet. Don't let them get the shot away. Because if they take a shot, obviously, it could be a problem. But that is a great tackle there from Rob Dickey. It's played out by Amos. And that is full time. A great win away 
in the FA Cup, I have to say. I think we played pretty darn well. I think we had our chances at the start and we deserved to go 1-0 up. It's amazing to see Pepe ask A, get some good game time, but B, get the winner as well. That's really great to see. But a good few minutes for Gubbins, a good few minutes for Morgan as well. George Thomas obviously making his way in as well, which is really good to see too. But I have to say, really, really happy with the result. I think we did play well at times. We were a little bit sus at the back, but I think we definitely earned that win there. And uh, it's a really good win to get in the Cup. It's always nice to win in the Cup. Uh, QPR fans, we're not massively used to it. But another game with less possession, but the same result. Well done, boys. Well, I have to say this has been a much better performance for us in regards to, obviously, today's episode getting two wins, which is really, really nice. We stay in a really good positive position in the table with a chance to push up into those playoffs still, which has still got to be the aim. Now we are here in this sort of position in the table. It's got to be a place we try and realistically aim for. Obviously, next episode, we will be finishing off uh, the January transfer window. So it's really important you guys let me know if you think I'm making a mistake by not buying a centre-back now, let me know. I will go with what you guys think is the general consensus. Otherwise, the plan is going to be that we pick up a pretty darn good youth scout. So we'll be able to pick up like a 4-4 or, you know, like a 4-3 or something like that. But I think a 4-4 we can actually afford to get and have like a good like million and a half left over as well. So it could be really good for us going forward. Obviously, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we get the uh, stuff in on the first as well for some new players anyway but let me know what you guys think thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed it then please do leave a like on the video it really does support myself the channel and the series out so thank you very very much if you choose to leave a like of course if you're new to the channel then please do consider subscribing and make sure you turn on notifications to be told any time that we upload a video or indeed go live with a live stream but for now guys i want to say a massive thank you for watching i've been tom you guys have been awesome and i'll see you soon look after yourselves and of course Wash your hands. What? In a bit. Nah, nah, his name is Hursty. Slap bald head, yeah, it'll probably hurt me. Bang top bins, yeah, it'll probably hurt you. Ginger, streamer, platform, YouTube. Drop a name in the chat, I'll say hello. Entertain, yeah, you already know. Capital H, yeah, I'm a read it slow. Hursty games, yeah, you already know.